Hello and welcome back to New World Rum Club. This is Rum Wranglings and today we're looking at the Marks of Hampton Distillery. Now they have eight marks and it's all about Jamaican funk. I've got six samples here and I'm going to take you through a little bit about the rum, how they create the funk and really a bit more about the Hampton Distillery. Earlier this year I was introduced to Hampton Distillery and Hampton Rums and it got my interest so much so that I joined a perfect measure tasting session with Danny from Vellier and Dawn Davies at the Whiskey Exchange and we went through some of the age statements that they had on offer at the time. On the back of that, recently they did the rum show and there was a geek session all about the marks of Hampton very similar to today, again with Danny and Dawn, and it was all to go into further into the detail about how they create these different marks and these different profiles. That, a bit of background reading, a bit of trying some of the rums, and here we are today. So the first question was, what is a mark? Now, it's quite simple to see that you have a mark and a load of letters or some shapes next to it, but really the mark is a formula of how they create the rum. And this is different for each different mark. And at Hampton, they have eight marks and we'll go through those in a minute. But first of all, some facts about uh, some facts about Hampton Distillery. So number one, it's in the Trelawney district in Jamaica, and that is seen as the Grand Cru of rum. It's a really aromatic region. And really, you know, there are only two distilleries in Jamaica in that region that can uh, that can be classed as Trelawney and that's the Long Pond Distillery and Hampton Distillery. So if you're seeing either of those two, you know that something special should be in the bottle. Fact number two, the distillery was set up in 1753, ages ago. It was purchased by the Hersey family in 2009, and they decided to bring their rums to the public, to the consumer, rather than go wholesale to the blenders and distributors and what have you. The first bottle was produced in 2018, and that was uh, distributed with Vellier, um, the Maison de Vellier, and they've got a collaboration for all the rums thereafter from 2018 to what we see today. Fact number three, everything 100% is pot still. There is no column at the distillery, and that means batch distillation. Fact number four, we are talking about funk here. High esters up to the point of the biggest one that's called Doc, and we'll go into that, but when they talk about Jamaican rums, you talk about funk, this is the funkiest of the funk and a varying degree down to something that's a little less fruity. So what are the eight marks? Well, the first one is OWH and that stands for Outrum W Hussey and it has an ester rating of 40 to 80 uh, grams per hectolitre. What the hell does that mean? What's an ester? I'm still looking into this myself, but the ester is a compound in the rum that creates the flavor profiles, especially the fruit and the floral notes. If you want to know some more, follow some links in the description below. I'm not going to go any further than that, other than it's measured uh, grams per hectolitre. And if you've got, say, 50 or even 1,000, it's actually not a lot in the litre, but it creates a very, very different profile. So at one end of the scale, the non-funky, um, side of the scale, you've got OWH, Mark 1, and that's 40 to 80 grams per hectolitre. I'm just going to go to the other extreme, which is DOC, and that has an ester level of a 1,400 to 1,600, and that's at the top of the scale. So I only have six here. I don't have Mark 1, which is OWH. I don't have Mark 2, which is LFCH, and LFCH stands for Loris Francis Close Hussey, and has a range of 90 to 100 grams per hectolitre. But then we get onto the Laroc. Now this is the Laroc, and it's a really fruity nose to it. And actually something that is really attractive, and if you see Laroc, it's one of the ones that, that, that is one that I would be recommending you try. So we have a Laroc, and that starts at 300 and goes to 400. So this is what most people would see as properly funky or funky rum if they don't know the rest of the range. Now all these rums are white rums. They've been reduced down to around 60 odd percent, so they're not up at the 80s. And this one is a white rum, really quite fruity, lovely taste, nice and fresh, quite happy with Laroc. That's number three. 
So when we go to mark number four, we've got HLCF, which stands for Hampton Light Continental Flavoured. Um, and we're starting to go up the funk level. In ester terms, in the numbers, it's five to 600 esters. And you do start to really get more of a bigger nose on it, more tropical, more floral. I'm not gonna go into too much just descriptions, but you know, you definitely know that's something different to the La Rock. And before I do anything else, as you go through, they do change and I'll go through that in a minute. But really, this is starting to get onto something that will be too funky for most people. Now for me, um, I was okay with trying this one. I've put very small measures in for a reason. And for me, oh, I like the La Rock. That is a step up, not, not out of my comfort zone, but you're getting to something that really is something that a lot of people would question. Now on to number five. Number five is diamond H, and it's seen as two diamonds and a H. Now, this in the ester levels goes from 900 to 1,000. And what does that mean? It means it's proper fruity. And this, I can still smell the tropical fruits, but I'm starting to get, you know, some nutty, nutty smells coming in. It starts to get quite acidity. It's not quite a face curler, it's not far off. That as a white rum is quite strong. Um, and I'm now at the boundaries of what I like and what I think I would buy. So let's move up. Right, the next one is H HGML. And this stands for Hampton George McFarquhar Lawson. I think they're all people associated to the, di to the distillery. Now, that is getting into a flavor profile that's moving more into the, the acids, into the, some chemical flavors. That, that's not necessarily my cup of tea. Let's keep going. Next one, C Diamond H. Now this has a range from 1200 to 40, uh, 1400. And I'm not too keen on the nose on this. You know, it's not as pungent as you'd expect it to be, but, That really is for someone special. That is not for me. It just is an overwhelming concentrate flavor in there. That just feels like it needs to be dulled down. Like there's a lot in there, it's just too much. And then this is the final one. This is Dock, and this is 1400 to 1600 esters. And this is the biggest one they do. Now I thought it would have a massive nose on it, but it doesn't, unless you let it sit in the room. So when we were smelling this, we thought we had the wrong one. Turns out we didn't, but they did say, leave it in the room overnight, see what happens to the smell of your room. Boom, it, it is an absolute monster. One not to mess with and one. That is not fun for me. Whether that's nail polish, something chemical, that is not something to have neat. If people like that and fair play, I'm not putting a smile on. I'm gonna go for something at that end. But as you can see, the funk is going through the roof in all of those. So now I've tried all of them. As I say, the first two marks I haven't had here. We started at the Laroque, we ended at the Dock, so mark three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And for me, Diamond H is the bit in the middle, the turning point on what I think is something that I'd have neat. So, why do these all exist? And when we asked that question, they answered with, rum concentrate now we're thinking is that squash a bit like squash turns out it is so what they were doing is that hampton was selling to the wholesalers to blenders and what they wanted was those tropical fruity floral flavors but as a concentrate now if they bought a barrel of dock they'd have put in a tiny amount to whatever other stuff they're putting in to create them and as you go down they put in more and more to create that profile for that reason as you go up the funk level and up the ester level and up the marks, 
they cost more money. The most expensive would have been a dock because of how concentrated it is and how little you needed to use in your blend to get those floral and those fruit flavors and those smells. So the demand's there, but what we found is that the rum Greek geeks of today start to explore these uh, different marks and want to know a bit more about them. So Habitash and Velier has been doing um, these things. So here you can see Diamond H and they're on here so you know what they are. You've got HLCF, you know, they've got them here. They're not gonna be for everyone, but they are for a lot of people. There we go, an example of a recent one, La Roque. It's on there. So that's where we are today. Now, how do you create the flavor to go from an OWH or Mark One to a dock of Mark Eight? Loads of ways. First things you've got to know is that they use Dunder. The, the uh, byproduct of the previous batch is put into the current batch to give it that um, existing flavor. They use wild yeast. Now, to top this up, they've got these things called graves. You don't want to know too much. Go and have a look, otherwise you might not want to drink the rum. But anyway, they have these graves to top up the, the wild yeast, to top up the bacterias. Let's not go there today. They have open fermentation in wooden, I think they're cedar vats. And the fermentation is really long. It's You're talking eight to 15 days, rather than a standard two to three days. And what does this do? Well, part of it is it creates high levels of acidity, which helps create some of these flavors. The last one is that they agitate it when it's in that fermentation stage with air pumps. Not gonna go into that, don't know enough about it, just one of the facts we learned. Interestingly, the fact is that they use local spring water from Trelawney. They tried the um, piped water from the plant. The experts took a nose to it, took a taste to it, threw it in the bin, it just wasn't good enough. So local spring water used for all of their rum. Um, and the last thing really is to create the different flavor profiles from the different range. It's not around the heads and tails because they're normally the same, but what it is is that they look at the amount of ingredients that they're putting in and some of the tweaks on the fermentation, whether it's the time it's fermented, whether it's the amount of air, whatever it is, that's all that's needed to create the different ranges. So there we have it. What's our summary? So there are eight marks for the Hampton Distillery. A mark is a formula that you know creates an ingredients formula on how to create one of these different marks. Hampton is in Trelawney, which is a grand crew of rum. So if you see uh, Hampton, you know that there's going to be something special about it. There's a lot of hype about it. Dock is the highest ester level that they do at Hampton, and it is the funk scale, and this is not something you want to be drinking. So what do I say? Get Hampton in your life. Just know what you're getting into, right? If you see something with one of the higher marks on it, you know you're going into the funky things. And although they say Hampton, if you've got a Diamond H and you don't like Jamaican funk, you know, smashing you in the face, you're not going to want it. So do have a look on the bottles. La Rock, you know that's sort of the third or fourth mark. You know that it's pretty much into the funk level, but actually it's something that, you know, a lot of people will like rather than someone who wants a real funk bomb. I think the last one is not all of the Hamptons have these marks on them and they won't do. So for example, the Great House, you know, it is something that um, has been very popular, and that is a blend of the first mark, uh, OWH, Outrun W Hussey, and Diamond H. And you'd expect that they've got a little bit of Diamond H and quite a lot of OWH to create a more palatable um, rum that, that suits more people than, than you know being a Diamond H or a C Diamond H. So there you have it, right? That is the Marks of Hampton, my very quick overview of what they are, what they taste like, what's involved in them. Hope you've enjoyed it. I'm going to drink something that's not pure white Hampton, high ester, funky rum now. Good night.